Hey, what's going on everybody out there on YouTube? Elric here once again on Tech of Tomorrow. So, okay, all of the new video cards have hit with the Polaris refresh. And at first, I admit, my attitude towards them was kind of a little piss poor because I just wouldn't, wasn't able to really wrap my head around this launch. But after reflection and using the cards for the past week or so and just doing a lot of different gaming and stuff, I just want to make very clear what my opinion is now at this point. Now, I just want to be very clear. If you own an RX 480 or you have an RX 470, I really don't think there's any need for you guys to sell your cards to jump into these cards. But if you do not have an AMD card whatsoever and you're trying to choose a card right now that you can afford and you're a true AMD fan, then yeah, these cards are very, very nice. They're what, you know, the actual, the actual Polaris, you know, release in the first place should have been. That's just how I feel. If they would have released this exact card, think about it, a year ago, think about how much better it would have been in competition with NVIDIA. And that's what this is really all about, right? It's a neck and neck game. Like one guy comes ahead, other guy says he's gonna pull ahead. They go back and forth, they back and forth, driving each other to, you know, to new peaks. Now, if AMD would have released these cards a year ago, it would have been a lot different situation because there are a lot of really nice things about the 580 and 570, I have to admit. The fact that they do run a lot cooler is a very big thing. For people out there who like their systems running nice and cool, wanna have that overclock headroom, the cooler a card runs, the better things are and truthfully I didn't see any cards from AMD on launch that only had a single 8 pin connector I know you guys you know we all said I've looked it up the cards do exist but on launch day AMD didn't sample anybody with any of these cards that you're talking about. I'm being completely honest with you. Check around review sites. Probably the people who bought the cards and did those reviews a little bit afterwards they probably did but for all of us reviewers we were all sent overclocked cards. Now why do you think that is? Because the overclocked card is obviously going to compete better, especially against the 1060, the three gigabyte version, which, you know, pretty much most people were testing against. Now, we tested against a six gigabyte 1060. And in some instances, we were seeing the 580 beating that card. Not in every instance, but in some instance, we did. Those cards are pretty much priced around the same thing. In fact, the AMD version right now at this point is more expensive. The super, super clocked one from EVGA, that's the one that we tested with, that card's $229 right now. The Sapphire card that we're pretty much testing against it, that card itself, come on, that card's overclocked, like crazy overclocked, right out of the box. It's eight gigabytes, so it has, you know, more memory on board, and it's also priced higher. It's about $30 higher. But for AMD, that's pretty doggone good, you know? For AMD to be able to, to compete at a price per price point in that little bit of a margin realm is really a good thing for them. So I gotta say, it, at the end of all this time I'm testing, I've changed my mind about this launch. At first, I admit I was really against it, but after reflection and doing it, I have to say for people out there who are just coming into buying a card and they're an AMD person, that's what they wanna use, then yeah, the 580 and the 570 are great cards. They run cooler in most cases, if you don't buy these overclocked crazy ones, they still have the basic power requirements and I want to clarify something as well maybe I misspoke or something when I said they had the same power requirements I did not mean whatsoever that they sucked as much juice what I meant is actually I should have said they require as many power cables that's more of what I meant so I want to clarify that because with the overclocked versions you needed an 8 pin and a 6 pin power connection to power those cards. Obviously the power draw, excuse me, the overall power draw isn't the same, but it did still require the same power connections. And that was what my point. And if I messed up and then I said that wrong, then I apologize, maybe I misrepresented my opinion, and that may be on me. Sometimes I make a mistake here and there too, just like everybody else, I'm human and I make a mistake. But at the end of the day, these cards do run cooler, and that's just a really big thing. They're quieter. And obviously, since the Polaris technology has now pretty much been pushed to the envelope, these are probably the best you're going to see out of the Polaris refresh. So I'm Elric. I know we're all waiting for Vega. That's what we're all sitting around going, yon, 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 yon. is Vega ever coming? And that's what I want to see. Now, if Vega can actually hit the market at a price point that can compete, and be just as fast as a 1080 or 1080 Ti, that'll be very, very nice. Now, I've seen some leaks and stuff coming out around the net, how true they are or whatever, I won't know. Until I actually get my card from AMD and I get to test it myself and bring you our version of it, I won't know. But I'm expecting that, like usual, it's going to be just a wee bit slower than a 1080 or 1080 Ti. 
and they'll cut the price probably into the $500 range. And as long as they do that, I'll be fine. You know what I mean? We all know that AMD always tries to usually come to market at a competitive rate. Now, if AMD releases Vega at a $700 price point, which I hope to God they don't, and they're trying to compete directly with all these TIs, I don't see that being an equal power scheme, and it will really look kind of funny. What will probably happen, and this is what most people are speculating, so believe me, I'm just speculating as well, and opinions are like assholes. We all have them, but... I'm saying it's probably going to be in the $599 range. That's what I'm going to bet at. Any takers out there, I bet you right now. Anyways, I'm Elric. You guys have been watching Tech of Tomorrow. Like I said, if I misrepresented anything in my initial opinions about the Polaris refresh, I apologize. I've changed my mind a little bit, and you guys hear what I have to say. So peace out. We'll see you guys back here for more tech on Monday.